Greetings everyone and welcome to Shortest Trip to Earth, a new game that I'm going to be covering on the channel for a little while. We are going to be checking this one out and this game has a lot in common with games like Faster Than Light. In fact, it draws quite heavily in terms of inspiration. We're currently playing on the latest build, which is build 305, and this game is actually a demo, an alpha demo that is freely available on IndieDB, uh, Indie Database. Uh, of course, there will be links to in the video description down below so uh, you can pick this up if you like what you see now this game was developed by interactive fate and as i mentioned does have quite a strong similarity to faster than light in a uh, sort of concept we're trying to get to earth rather than trying to fight off a, an enemy fleet but the mechanics by which we get back to earth are quite similar we encounter systems we we go through the nodes of a system visiting various stars and events that might be happening there there's combat that it feels definitely you can feel the inspiration there though i would say that shortest trip does does improve on a lot of the systems of fast and light now obviously there's there's several features that aren't quite in yet and probably the best way to explain any game like this is just to show so we're gonna jump both feet into the pool uh, into the pool so we're gonna just so we're gonna just jump with both feet straight into the game now then, starting a new game will overwrite your unfinished game. We have not got an unfinished game, that is fine because I've just updated. So let's go ahead and start the game. Now, as the, the game name suggests, the goal is getting back to Earth. And it seems that as you reach certain milestones in that journey, you can simply start from that point in the future, which is actually pretty cool. So, Sector 1, Captain's Log. A warp drive malfunction has landed us in the wrong place, light years away from Earth. We're almost out of fuel. Supplies are running out. Some equipment is not working. Some crew members might be injured. Personally, I find all of this not too bad because dot dot dot. And then we have a look at the different ships that are available. Now, some of them have uh, unlock requirements, much like Faster Than Light, really. But uh, the ships that we start with are fairly fairly uh, low-key. They don't have um, the ability to um, synthesize a lot of the materials that we are going to need on an ongoing basis. So we're going to rely on external sources. For example, the Tigerfish Utility Frigate is armed with a powerful mining laser and missiles, but was not designed for long-range travel. It lacks any self-sustainability modules and must resupply from external sources. The Rat uh, Empire ship, very much the same. Now, they have different sorts of weapon loadouts, but uh, we're going to be going with the Tigerfish just because we feel like it. Now, the Tigerfish is hard mode, and then the Arrow Nose is very hard mode. These used to be a little bit different. This used to be normal mode, very hard mode. Uh, sorry, hard mode, then very hard mode, and uh, quite a few things have been adjusted based on feedback, I imagine, since the last version. So let's go ahead and jump in. Now, first run bonus, sector bonus. We have got one, uh, 15 fate points. Now, fate points are kind of like a, a meta progress currency. If you imagine games like Rogue Legacy, where you would gain coins, and then between runs you could improve your castle so that future runs would benefit from something you bought, maybe higher stats or something like that. This is basically what fate points are. You gain fate points by doing things that um, have a, a positive karmic reaction like you might choose not to harvest all the life off a planet but just to to gently sample the uh the ecology without disrupting anything that might earn you karma points whereas alternatively you could just you know clear cut all the forest and get all of the resources that probably wouldn't um but with the karma points you can set up your run in various different ways and uh, let's have a quick look at what we've got here uh to commission nuke we can add one capital missile uh, no. Um, my main ga guns upgrade. We would lose 40 synthetics for this, but we would replace our industrial lasers with Mark II versions, which are a lot better. So I am going to sink a lot of points into that. Now, there's no negative traits you can take, which would be an interesting one. We can start with a little bit more money. We can start with a decommissioned drone. Um, we can start with an impro improvised med bay if we wanted to. Uh, that's possible. Now, I'm going to be taking the unreliable warheads because the missile systems on the Tigerfish are fantastic, but they run out of, of explosives very quickly. So we're definitely going to be taking that. Now we've got five points left. Fuel is obviously a good choice, but uh, I'm going to be going with the reactor to help out our weapon systems a little bit. Hmm. 
There's quite a few things that we could pick up here. We could go with a, an improved engine. A local tech printer let us um, replace our old engines. The printed engines are efficient, but brittle. Uh, I'm not sure. I think we'll go for some fuel. We could get some food as well. Mm -hmm. Or we could get an additional module. Decommissioned or degraded. <clears throat> Manually assemble DIY technology. Um, no, actually, I think we're going to grab a decommissioned ship drone. Just for the fun of it. Because that drone is actually uh, reminiscent of a film. And I, it, it amuses me. So we're going to take it. I actually can't even remember the, the name of the film. I just remember that the, the drones were Huey, Dewey and Louie. Which was amusing to me. Malfunction in our ship's warp drive landed us thousands of light years away from home. Little fuel, little resources. Our only option was to accelerate towards the closest star using conventional FTL engines. Conventional FTL engines? You call faster than light engines conventional? What? Okay, that's a different use of the, the term. It's not what I would call conventional. But okay, so the nearest star was 15 light years away. That does change quite a few things. Okay, right. The bridge is a non-functional and we cannot move as a result. <clears throat> Mothership AI. Captain, I've defreezed our entire crew. <laughs> defreezed. I've assigned all of them to operate different ship modules. You might want to review this later because the AI may not have assigned them in the best possible way. Now, the uh, latest update has actually automatically turned all of our weapon systems off, which is pretty cool. We've got a, a little ninja. What? An animal with chip enhanced brain. It just moves around and eats my food. Scallywag. Um. I've completed calculating the shortest route back to Earth. The journey goes through 10 sectors of uncharted space. This means you need to find more fuel and other resources along the way to stay alive. If possible, explore every star system to maximize your survival chances. I'm not entirely sure that that is the best advice. Frankly, I think you might be kidding. Um, let's have a look. Now, all crew members, can I actually rename you? Can I rename you? Can I do anything to rename you? Repair, operate, attack, move. I would like to rename you. Ah, oh, poop. I can't rename the crew. Well, hopes and dreams dashed. Oh, well, I guess we'll have to just live with it. Uh, we've got a couple of people with... Ooh, you've got a good module operating skill. How about you? No, not too bad. Good. I want to get people out here so I can easily see who is the best for the various jobs. Because this matters to me. I intend to have only the best of jobs. Uh, get you there. The others in the in the cryo sleeper are fine. Right, so we've got you've got four. I would like you working on the shield. Uh, one of you around here's got four. I would also like you working on the shield. So we've got an awesome shield. Uh, do we have anyone else with super high uh, module use or operations? No, 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 no other people with amazing. Oh well, I guess you're going to be running the bridge then. I know, we could do this bad. Oh, there's someone over there as well. Uh, that's fine. This does require someone working it. So you've got an operation skill of two. Uh, you've got one of three. Um, actually then, I would like you running the uh, scanner. Since that's turned on currently. And you've also got a three. Okay. That's not terribly bad, you know. Uh, let's get a couple of people back in to where we can, wherever we can, really. Uh, oh, there's also one back there. You sneaky. It's hiding it. You've got fairly good on uh, on repairs, though. I'm not sure who the best repairer is. Uh, actually, probably our robot. You know what, robot? You don't eat organics. Other people do. So let's pop them in the freezer. You can wander around doing stuff. It's fine. This is the way I would rather it be. Why, little ninja, are you eating my organics, you scallywag? Okay, so that's everything sorted. We've got two tactical missiles, basically nukes. Uh, two fairly high-powered mining lasers and two missile launchers. None of these are turned on because we don't want them turned on at the moment. And yes, our organics are low. That That is unfortunately very, very true. Okay, well, we've uh, taken care of everything we needed to do, so now we can actually move around. Oh, wow, this system's a bit of a nightmare. All of this, uh, like, static on the screen, these are, um, 
asteroids. You do not want to get too close to those. Otherwise, you take damage. I'm just getting close enough to have a look at these various stars. Can't fly too close to the star. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm going to have to go through that asteroid belt and manage to do it without taking any damage. Fantastic. A planet with atmosphere. Okay, we want to go down there. Now, you don't really get anything from, from investigating the asteroid fields that I've seen so far. Typically, it results in you just taking damage by moving through it. But that is particularly dense. I may go and have a look at that. Now, the range that we've got here is due to our uh, if i have a look there it's due to our long range sensors and our combat scanners which i think they combine this may only be used in combat but uh, if those were offline this ring would be about that big but let's go and have a look at this planet now this is where the events from faster than light if you want to make the comparison there this this would be the equivalent of that this planet lacks any value for us, but two of the crew insist on entering the atmosphere to admire the local scenery. They come back after a few hours, looking super satisfied and a bit exhausted. They report having a good time admiring the views. Uh huh. What views were they admiring? I wonder. Uh, that cost us five fuel. Not so great, because fuel is super, super rare. But we did get a fake point for it, so okay. Uh, let's go and have a look at this little area over here. Is this going to be anything? No, alas, it is not. Now, there is a possibility, unfortunately, I'm going a very long way around this to uh, get to these gas giants. We may be able to get a little bit of um, fuel from the gas giants, depending on how much risk is involved. Has a low volume of harvestable fuel elements in the atmosphere. Atmospheric conditions are safe for orbital mining. Okay, well, then we will harvest. We'll probably have to expend some materials to construct the harvesting machinery. Um, oh, it soon starts to intensify, threatening to turn into a dangerous megastorm. We're currently using Mothership to harvest the gas. Should we leave? Uh, we've already used so much fuel in this system, I'm going to say yes. We should stay. Our estimations left a too short safety window for leaving, and the megastorm flushed over us with full force, electrifying the entire ship with countless lightning bolts and badly scorching its external equipment. At least we got some fuel out of this. We lost a lot of materials and quite a lot of ship hit points for that, and gained 75 fuel. Ugh. Not a good start. Not a good start at all. Um, we can try the second one though, see if it's a little bit better for us. Sometimes you'll have much better luck, and other times it'll go horribly, horribly wrong. There we are. This gas giant has a very poor concentration of fuel elements in its atmosphere. Nothing to do here. Oh well. Okay, so at this point we want to warp out then. Now, as uh, with Fast and Light, one, there'll be one exit node in the chain, but otherwise we need to move around. There's one trade signal here where you know nothing of this planet. Um, so, we'll go ahead to near. It'll cost us 50 fuel. We've got a maximum of four jumps. We could instead head in that direction, but I'm willing to make the, the round trip. It's uh, costly, but... Actually, if we go this way, we don't have to visit any planet more than once. Uh, so, sure, rather any star system. We can make the jump. This is just our scanner range. Just tells us how far out uh, information we can gather is. Mercenary space station. Okay. Let's go down here and have a quick glance at... Oh, okay. We get being intercepted. A small ship is rapidly approaching tactical weapons range. Does not respond to our communicate. Uh, Com requests. Okay, flat out battle. Okay, right. We've currently got a pause button. Previously, the best you could do is slow time down. And you could also speed it up, but we have lost the speed up button. This is a temporary experiment, but we can hover over this to find out a little bit more about the ship. Uh, they've got 16 hull points, which puts them lower than us. They've got a slightly better shield. In terms of weapons, they've got a, mine, a degraded mining laser. It does one damage. It's not going to go through our shields very fast. Ours do four damage. Uh, they have got a combat sense. It's all DIY by the looks of it. A point defense, which will, will shoot down missiles. They've also got an Imperial Destroyer cannon. does two damage. This does one damage. They seem to be uh, readying up quite quickly. Um, they've also got this, a another point defense system. I'd actually be quite interested in taking those if I could. The warp drives are charging up. Um, passive combat center, explosive storage. Okay, they've got two reactors though. 
I don't think we're going to be knocking out the uh, the power at all. Not in this one. What we can do is we can try and aim to just damage their weapon systems. So sure, we'll bring online our mining lasers. We are not yet going to bring online the missile system though. I don't think we want that yet. Instead, we are going to... Sorry about that, my uh, mouse is going weird. We're going to just aim for the hull, because <clears throat> we've got a better chance of hitting the hull. And right now, what we want to do is pull down their shields. So we just want to hit the hull. Once we've managed to uh, bring the shields down, we can start hitting the various weapon systems. And that will that will disable them for a little while. Now, their um, cannons are probably going to go straight through our shields and do a little bit of damage. No, they are missing. Oh, no, they did manage to hit us a little bit. There we go. Come on. Uh, that was a bit of a miss there. But we've done a lot of damage to their shield so far. Please stop hitting my shield system. Oh, that is unfortunate. Yep, they've taken my shields down completely. Okay, now we need to re-aim. We, in terms of their weapon systems, that's got 7 HP, that has got 4. A single hit on that will take it out. That has got 7 HP, that's got 5, 5. We could hit... Hmm... Two hits on this reactor would take it down. Sure, okay, let's tr try that. Also, we're going to bring online our uh, missile system. And I would like this to aim for... We could go for the second reactor. If we can knock down their, their power, that would be ideal. How much damage? Does five. Um, well, actually, we could take out either of these with that if we wanted to. But I'm feeling that going for their reactors would probably be a better use of my time. But uh, their point defense is just the one that I'm worried about. We'll see how that works. I've not actually seen point defense used up to now. So, oh, that is bad. Ship on fire. Let's uh, make sure we try and take some things out, please, people. We need someone repairing stuff. Like right now, get out there and repair. Uh, yeah, you go and jump into this. We're going to turn that on as well. Oh, that can go away. There we go. Power that up. We don't want to uh, have things powered up if we don't need them to be powered up. But I do need my crew out and about if they've got any kind of mechanics abilities. Uh, yeah. Let's just make sure you're all out there trying to help out. Get in there. There we go. And hopefully they can uh, take care of things. Now, we've the same, we've completely destroyed that weapon. You don't have to destroy something. You can just break it down. Uh, we're kind of going for the reactor still with that one. And you are going for nothing at the moment. Okay, well, go for the combat scanner then. Let's try and take that out of commission. Let's see how this goes. We're down on functional minimal sensor range. This is very unfortunate. Come on, people. Need those shots going off. Well done. Comet scanner is down. Good news. Uh, that reactor is going to be going offline fairly soon, I would say. We've disabled a few of their systems right now. Um, sure, start firing on that system there. I want this reactor completely shut. Actually, it's going to be 30 seconds before that goes down. So let's go for the other reactor if we can. All right, missiles are away. Are they going to be intercepted with point defense? Those point defense may not be ready to fire yet. And we missed. Massive missings taking place here. Uh, that is quite unfortunate. Because it's expensive to fire those things. Uh, this is... Offline. Fantastic. Okay, you do not need to fire any longer. Let's shut you down. There we go. And shut that down. I never actually put someone in there anyway, so it didn't really matter. Um, could I have you wandering around possibly helping rather than being sat in there? Uh, you're good. You can head back. So can you. And so can you. Let's get people back if they don't need to be out and about. Right, these systems are going to take a long time to come back up. Okay, we've disabled that system. It's got a little bit of health left. But at this point, I'm fairly happy that we should be able to just wipe out what's left. Actually, let's get both of these guns. We will take out this reactor completely. Now, I'm not sure how this works in terms of how long something will... Uh, like, if we'll be able to recover something if we destroy it. I'm assuming not. So you might want to leave certain subsystems that you are interested in, in keeping. 
Um, oh, no, there we go. We actually destroyed the whole thing. Now, when you're attacking a, a subsystem, half of the damage you do will be applied to the hull itself. So eventually, you're going to break the hull. Salvage complete. Our drones have uh, salvaged all resources left on the battlefield. We've gained one module, 75 fuel, metals, um, 60 synthetics, 50 explosives, and one fate point for daring to uh, to fight the enemy there. Now, the, dr the thing we've got is a point defense. That's actually quite nice. Uh, accuracy is 20% plus 70% ship bonus if installed. Critical chance is 9. Operational, but no crew. With this is 20 plus 70 percent ship bonus damage five. This only does damage one. How often does it fire though? Well, I don't strictly want to. Oh, there we are. There's some uh, a bit of uh, better information. So loading time is 15 seconds. Only nine seconds on this. Still, that does a lot more damage, like a crazy amount more damage. But it does use explosives, whereas this one does not. And I quite like that. Um, yeah, okay, we're going to install that one down here. Can I... Oh, right-click, there we go. And then this one can be stored on our ship for later. We can sell it, or maybe even pop it, pop it on one of the other external points. They do require external points, though, for these. Now, you've got a fairly low um, usage there, so we'll move you guys around a little bit. But I think that's generally okay. You're not needed there. You can hand back. But at this point, we're going to shut down all of our weapon systems because we don't need them online. We don't need the long wing scanner online in a fight, as far as I'm aware. It's not necessary for what we're doing. Okay, so that is that first fight taken care of. Now let's go and investigate the desert planet that that ship came from. <clears throat> A desolate ball of sand, but we've located a military ship wreckage. We could sca scavenge it for materials, yes. We need to worry about organics soon, though. We were able to scavenge some materials off the wreckage. That's actually quite a lot of materials, to be fair. Okay, well, that was pretty good. Let's fly a little bit closer to this planet and see what's going on down there. Hello. Another desert planet. Okay, let's uh, pop in and see what it's about. Very worried about organics at this point. The planet's surface is almost exclusively com covered with lifeless desert and dangerous sandstorms. Some sandstone structures seem to be artificially made, suggesting a possibility of hidden intelligent life. Enter the atmosphere to find the local sentience? Yes. Maybe they will have food to trade. One of the sand structures proved indeed artificial. It's a hidden entrance to a network of underground caves. Uh, yeah, sure, we'll use a drone to investigate. We found the locals, a primitive civilization of underground maggot farmers who call themselves the Gen Bao. After analyzing their culture, our team decided to contact them. Everything went smoothly, and the locals held a welcoming ceremony for us. We documented valu valuable Xeno data on the Gen Bao. Now, a, we've got food, which is amazing, because that was a fairly long shot to get it. But B, we've got Xenodata. Now, Xenodata is your currency. It seems that uh, in this part of the of the galaxy, or perhaps at this point in, in, in time, no one really values metals and things like that. I mean, they, they're useful for a thing, but the credit, the economy is run on information, on, on, on data and datum. Um, so, yeah, we've, we've just got 100... 100 datum there so we can move on and trade that for something like repairing our ship at some point the idea of having a currency of having an economy entirely built on knowledge is fantastic because like do they do they only trade knowledge that they've already got is knowledge stored on on a non-copyable format in some way so that if i if i trade you the the, the name of the gen pao no one else can because i have got that doc documentation there it's it's a very interesting idea our, after our ambassadors uh, ask if the locals need any help, the Jambao explain they have been forced to hide and live underground for generations because of a giant monster who regularly appears and kills anybody on the planet's surface. They plead for you to kill the monster who lives somewhere in the planet's mountains. Um, I've got enough explosives to do it. Send a hunter killer team into the mountains. Minimally three crew required. No, I'll use the explosives. 
extensive orbital bombardment has reduced the target mountains and any of its inhabitants to rubble and molten minerals. Our scans find no trace of any hostiles and we deem the operation a success. Two fade points, that's actually pretty good. And it only costs us 50 um, uh, explosives. The Jane Bauer emerged from the surface, singing and dancing, celebrating their newfound freedom to move around on the planet's surface. They start a ritual of citing 1,000 poems dedicated to the liberation of their planet. They also bring us many, many edible maggots. We spend some more time to research the civilization before moving on. So we've got even more Xenodata, even more Fate Points, and a whole great whopping load of organics. That is possibly the best possible conclusion to that. Oh my lord. I am very, very happy with that outcome. We do need fuel now, though. Uh, right, this is a space station. We should be able to go in there and just do a little bit of trading. Um, the crew is taking legal drugs tonight. Nicotine vapor. Okay. Uh, right, uh, looks like we could purchase some crew people. Uh, alternatively, we could uh, buy or sell resources. We've got a lot of organics right now. Um, we have not got many exotics. In fact, we've got none. But I would like to buy all the fuel you have, so let's go ahead and get all 374 credits. Honestly, that's probably the best thing we can do right now. So I'm going to confirm that sale, and there we are, we're filling up the fuel uh, storage. And in terms of crew, there's no way we can afford them now, but uh, interesting. Oh wow, they've got some amazingly good crew too. You guys, maybe I should have gone for one of those, considering it's only like 134. Um, would I be able to sell... No, this one-to-one. -one. Uh, it's fine. We could sell some organics if we want to. Oh, actually, no. They have organics. We do not. Never mind. Um, could make 200 credits by reducing all of our food. No. No, it's fine. We'll leave. I should have checked on the crew before doing that, because some of them are amazing, especially in regards to... Uh, their repair abilities, but wow, do they eat a lot? My goodness, a semi independent ship drone. Why do you need organics? That frightens me. Robot eating people. My goodness. All right, we're going to exit there. All right, onwards to the next destination. Zeodite is the next place we've got to visit. So uh, there we go. It's going to cost us 50 fuel. We've got eight jumps remaining at that cost. Uh, oh, hello. What are you? I would like to know what you are. Why am I being chased by it? Oh, no. There's an anomaly chasing me, and also uh, a ship decides to attack me. We detect two ships rapidly approaching tactical weapons range. Our ships are ready to attack, but you're lucky, because we have no shortage of slaves at the moment. You can use the easy way, or the hard way. I'm not going to give you all of my metal. You can jog on, mate. Uh, unfortunately, let's uh, pause time. Let's see, you've got one weapon there, you've got three weapons over here. So this one... You've got no shields there either, so we should be able to hit that fairly hard, fairly fast. Um, it does four damage, though. This does two damage. Low accuracy, though. And these, mm, again, low accuracy. So I'm going to ignore you for the time being. Let's power up our weapon systems. We're going to power down our long-range scanner. And power up all of our weapon systems and we are going to hit this with everything we have for the time being just want to wipe this out and take this ship out of the equation here then we can stop attacking it perhaps look at a few other things what have you got there passive combat scanners that's interesting okay and how about you you've got an ecm2 Ooh, that might be nasty uh i could Potentially to take you out by going for your reactor. That is an option. If I turn you on, let's get someone in there. Who have we got? Um, got anyone with decent combat skills? Not particularly. Okay, well, you can go and jump in. Go. And then once that's armed, I would like it to be firing on the reactor in that ship. Now, the missile's got a good chance of going through shields, so hopefully it'll work out that way for us. Lots of firepower there, lots of damage to various things. Let's take that down, please. Good. It has been disabled. More firepower coming our way, unfortunate. Let's make sure our best repairer is out and about. Where are you? Uh, can you repair anything? No, nothing is currently broken, strictly speaking. Alright, we are taking a fair chunk of damage, though. 
There we go. A little bit more damage over there on that gun. It hasn't got a lot of uh, health left. That was very unfortunate. Considering we've got a reasonably good chance of actually hitting things, we're not really hitting them very often, which is very, very disappointing. Very disappointing indeed. Come on, you've only got a tiny bit more on that thing. Stop missing with the missiles, the scallywag. <clears throat> I need two solid hits with my lasers to take this out. Or we'll end up destroying the ship at this rate. That's not quite what I was aiming to do. Come on, one more hit, and then we're sorted. Scallywags. Yes, come on, another laser. Yeah, there we go. Right, now we are going to be aiming for the hull because the hull is easier to hit. However, you can go ahead and start hitting the reactor. That's fine. How much health is on those? Yeah, enough that it's a bit of a problem for me. There we go. Let's get all of the firepower in here, please. And how scoundrels. There we go. Still missing. Lots of explosives are being used on this. Shield is down, though, which is great. So now I can start targeting the reactor itself and at this point I would say stop firing power down don't want to use any more of my explosives they're really ex expensive and I haven't got enough of them there we go reactor is offline weapons are all down fantastic news if we can just take that reactor out then we might be in with a chance ah oh, damn it they repaired that remarkably fast very unhappy with that I wish there was a way that I could speed up time still, but alas, no. Um, taking out the ability to speed things up is a bit of a bit of a loss, honestly. I was okay with not having a way to pause it. That actually seemed pretty fun. Um, nevertheless, we are having a pretty awful time of hitting this thing. Okay, time for me to start hitting the... Uh, we've only got an 8% chance of hitting that anyway. We'll start going for the, the hull. Just go for the hull, it's fine. Aim for the hull. They've run out of explosives for the Imperial Gatling gun, which is good. There we go. And that's down. And finally, let's go for the hull over here. Unless we can hit something else that might be fun to destroy. No, it doesn't seem it. Let's just go for the hull then. There we are. Probably the fastest way overall, just aiming for the hull generally, because you've got a fairly good chance of actually hitting the hull. I wasted a lot of missiles just trying to take out that reactor. I was really hoping that I could just blow it up, and then maybe I could force a surrender, but it uh, doesn't seem so. Right, so what are we going to get back from this? Hopefully a good wallop of, uh, of fuel. A little bit of fate, a little bit of xenodata, a good bit of fuel, actually. Um, two modules, wow, okay. And some explosives. Okay, that wasn't actually a bad fight. We've got a mini cannon 3 and a small fuel tank, which we can happily install right there. Uh, the mini cannon 3, though, actually 21 plus 70% uh, ship bonus. Let's have a look at you. It overall does one damage, um, 8 seconds. Is it better than this one? Point defense ancient. It's slightly better, actually, yes. Very slightly better. Um, I would say that we're going to replace this. I could replace both, but having this there because it does so much damage is quite nice, but we are very low on explosives right now. But I think this this will work. I think this is, is going to work for us. Uh, if you could go back and, and sleep for now, because we don't need you out and about. Likewise, actually, here... I don't need you doing anything. I'd rather you be uh, sleeping because you eat no food when you're sleeping, or at least I believe that is the case. Perhaps you eat less food when sleeping is more the, more the point. Either way, always turn things off when you don't need them because it reduces the amount that your reactors are having to process in order to... Uh, and now, I assume that the reactors scale down their output based on the requirement. If they don't, then it would be wise to go through the reactors and turn things off as necessary. We cannot turn either of these off based on what we've got turned on. So, yeah, we'll have to have to have a think of that one. Perhaps I could even turn this off if I really wanted to. Um, but it takes time to recharge the shield, which is a bit of a problem there. Either way, we have finished here, and we can now go and... Oh. Um, ah, yes, yes, of course. I still need to put this into storage. So let me just go ahead and store that. And then head back. 
Uh, there is an no no anomaly there. Is there anything I can do with said anomaly? I have no idea. Lost the cargo containers uh, featuring old earth hegemony design. These containers were historically used to transport mundane commercial supplies. Sure, we'll open it. This is where it was booby trapped. Uh, full of well packed frozen blueberries. Fantastic. That's actually more than we can hold. Uh, okay. Well, let's uh, go into our ship. Can I convert that at all? Um, cannot move with. Uh, damn. We, we have to just drop it. At some later point, I would very much like to uh, get some sort of way to convert stuff I don't need into fuel. That would be fantastic. The anomaly, or rather a flock of anomalies, look like a rainbow light. Uh, look like rainbow lights, rather. They flow about with beautiful gracefulness, dancing and creating possible patterns in the black cosmos. That's actually quite lovely. Do not do anything threatening and wait. Quickly disengage. Try to communicate with it via all known comm systems. Um, sure. Contacting Anomaly. The lights start to dance closer to us until they are almost whirling around the ship. They transmit some kind of static into our receivers, which our AI translates into a single word. Sex! Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, <laughs> quickly disengage! No, we're gonna blink colorful lights, damn it! The crew needs some love. The lights seem to get super excited and start to occasionally fly into our ship, piercing it harmlessly. The crew get strange feelings each time the energies flow through them, and the AI tells the anomaly it's injecting non-harmful xenodata into our ship's data core. Um, tells the anomaly is injecting... Okay, that's cool. Suddenly the rainbow lights erupt into a ball of condense, uh, condensed energy and then fade out of existence. The ship got a minor burn, but everything else is okay. <laughs> Well, we helped some sort of rainbow lights die through sex, so we get three fade points. I think that's completely fair. Completely fair. Uh, okay, so let's go and uh, see what we've got down here. <laughs> oh, my lord. Right, analyzing data, what we got. Uh, it's a gas giant. Uh, we'll check it out simply because we're here, but we're probably not going to harvest it if there's any risk. Thin layer of harvestable fuel elements in the outer layers. General atmospheric conditions are mild, but a few small plasma storms have been detected. Eh, no, I'm not interested. We don't need it. Uh, let's head up instead to you. What be you? Lifeless planet. Okay, well, let's check this one out. Uh, gravity here is too strong for the surface operations. Oh, okay. One of the mothership's exotic pet animals has learned to speak new human words. Who am I? I, I, I? I could only uh, assume is the end to that, but uh, I'm afraid I can't tell you that. Right, let's jump over to the next um, place. We've got 50 fuel per jump, and we've got more than enough to make it. Right, we're very close to someone we can analyze straight away, which is fantastic. And then we've got a space station over there. Fantastic, fantastic, because we really need repairs. So bad do we need repairs. Let's see what kind of uh, fuel we can get there. This plan and its moon were too hot to have any practical value for us. Oh, well, that was just annoying. Okay, well, we'll cut a path straight across the system if we're able to... Ooh. Warp life. Hello? Warp life. We've encountered a lone warp whale. These peaceful creatures are known for their beautiful telepathic songs that even passers-by can hear. Their bodies are also full of exotic substance. Exotic substance is very, very lucrative. But listen to it singing without harming it. You and your crew are filled with intense and beautiful emotions as you listen to the whale singing. The telepathic song seems to be mostly about the relationship between love and loneliness. Aww. We record the encounter for scientific purposes. Three more fate and 57 Xenodata. Marvellous. Let's go and say hello to the space station, Ye Star Fuel. Where I can assume we can purchase star fuel. Yes, we can purchase star fuel or sell exotics. Uh, I think we shall purchase star fuel. This is fine. Uh, we can purchase all of the star fuel. This is also fine. We won't have to worry too much about our fuel situation for quite some time as a result of that. Okay, one of them. Uh, oh, it's still the same one there. Okay, well, that's fine then. Exit the station. We've done everything we can here. 
it's time to move on. It seems that uh, you do find some things just out in space, which I wasn't aware you could do. That's worth keeping in mind. Now, finally, on to Dyke. One planet has been visited. Uh, zero of one planet visited there. We've got 11 jumps worth of fuel. That's fantastic. Gas giant. Violent atmosphere. Then, no. Well, maybe. We might find something in the atmosphere. I don't know. Well, it's always worth having a look. I mean, I'm, I'm practically there anyway. I'm not wasting any time. Uh, the gas giant has abundant fuel elements in its thick, corrosive atmosphere. General atmospheric conditions are extremely violent, featuring massive tornadoes, electric storms, and occasional explosive plasma reactions. Eh, disengage. My ship would snap apart. And I'm not so fond of that idea. All right. Uh, planet with ecosystem. Ooh, let's go and have a look. The dominating plants on this planet grow enormous pods filled with oily substance as fruit. Analysis indicates that the fruit can be processed into star fuel, as it carries a small warp charge. Harvest the star fuel fruits. Uh, we can eco-harvest the fruits, disengage and come back later, or fu our fuel tanks are too full. Or disengage and leave this beautiful world untouched. Um, we'll eco-harvest it. We'll take, we'll take a little bit, take a sustainable amount. Harvesting organics completed successfully. No accidents reported. The warp substance was processed to star fuel, and the plant parts were fed to our trusty organic containers, which easily processed them into human-compatible universal biomass. Fantastic. Full on on food as well. Okay, this actually run is not doing too bad. Um, there's something else going on there. Maybe I should go back. Or maybe I won't. Actually, I've already taken enough from that planet. A shipwreck. Ooh. Let's find out what you're about. Today's menu. Cloned, mildly, psychedelic, legal plants. <laughs> Man, this crew must be having a good time. Space sex, space whale songs, psychedelic plants that are legal. Oh, this is fantastic. We have discovered a shipwreck of unknown design floating in space and damaged beyond repair. It seems all systems are offline. Send a scavenging engineers to board the ship? Yes, let's scavenge it. Probably use a little bit of our stuff. Shipwreck. Taking a long look inside the shipwreck, our engineers found an armored cryopod containing a frozen Terran cat. She passed all decontamination procedures and is now an important member of the crew. Hooray! We've got a space cat! Plus one crew member. Uh, another master feed, but uh, fine. That's fine. We uh, got quite a lot of things, actually, from that. Okay. So, not only have we got psychedelic legal plans for, for noms, we've also had SpaceX with a rainbow and... We have, um, what else have we done? We've listened to a whale song. We have not clear cut a planet and we have got a space cat. This is amazing. Wait a sec, what? Our space cat is called Little Bastard? <sighs> Why have you got to ruin things, game? Why? I just don't understand. But that's where we're going to be ending this first episode. I do look forward to any feedback in the comments on whether you enjoy this game or not. And perhaps we'll see some more episodes of it in the future. But that's it from me. So until next time, and as always, take care, everyone.